Hey everyone, it's James at Dream Better English in association with LK Formation. So what I'm doing in this live stream is I'm here to help you improve your English vocabulary, pronunciation, speaking. And the way we'll do this is just in a relaxed way. We're going to look at the newspapers and we're going to look at some vocabulary. Um, you can send me messages in the chat. Not exactly sure how that works yet. It's my first live stream really doing this. So uh, I've got my um, training wheels on. And, but we'll go and we'll just see how it goes. I want to help you guys improve. I hopefully will improve as we go along and um, help you with your uh, learning English. So let's have a look at some of these newspapers today. Um, we're going to look at some headlines. We're not going to go too deep into everything. We want it to be a bit relaxed. I probably will be speaking too fast in the beginning, a bit nervous, but as time goes on I'll become more clear, your listening will become better, relax, you obviously will not understand everything, but don't worry, we're gonna get you there in the end. I'm gonna try and make this more enjoyable, it's the summertime, we don't want homework, so I'm going to go into this newspaper uh, called uh, the Daily Mail. It's the Mail Online, and it's a newspaper which uh, it, it polarizes people. You know, it's a bit right wing. A lot of people like it, and a lot of people don't like it. But for learning English, fantastic publication, great idioms, collocations, everything for learning English. So, this is an interesting article I wanted to look at. It's about emojis. Okay. So, emojis are when we're sending text messages on WhatsApp or... Uh, what I recently found out, uh, recently, was that in the United States, people don't really use WhatsApp. They use the standard SMS that comes with their phone. So that was very surprising for me. I live in, um, I live in Europe and in every country I've been to in Europe, and as far as I know in the world, everybody uses WhatsApp, but not in the United States. They're still, still uh, a bit behind using the traditional way. So, but one thing we all do use is emojis, these little faces when we send text messages. So, let's have a look at this. If you think an aubergine is a harmless veg, vegetable, and a peach is just a fruit, you need to wise up about emojis, okay? You need to wise up. You need to become more, more clever, okay? Well, we're going to see what an aubergine is, and we're going to see what a peach is, if you don't know. Okay, let's go down. Okay, so here are some of the traditional uh, emojis that we might commonly use, um, and the different age groups think different things. So, to give a flavor, uh, let's go back up. What does it say? Warning, more bad news for anyone already feeling terribly, woefully, out of touch. I'm going to make this bigger so you guys can read as well. Out of touch, pretty much every aspect of modern life. Okay, because now, mm -hmm, the conflict between... Okay, step forward emojis, right. So what do these mean to the different groups? Let's have a look. Now... For some groups, what does this mean for you? For younger generations, I think it means a, a, lot, a much different thing to the older generation. I'm going to try and zoom out. Okay. When is it, this is an aubergine. When is an aubergine not a key ingredient for your delicious summer ratatouille or a sign that moussaka is on the menu? When it's an indication of someone's impressive manhood or a prediction of or invitation to hot sex. Okay, so for older people it seems that this would be just a typical vegetable and for younger people it's more sexual. Here we see manhood, that's a man's, a man's penis and uh, an invitation to hot sex. Look, uh, when we're talking in English uh, in this channel uh, we're going to be coming across all different types of words. There's no intention to offend but we will be using adult language um, in these uh, when it comes along so don't be offended it's just the reality of of everyday English question when is a lovely ripe peach emoji not actually a peach answer when it is beautifully firm pair of buttocks of course 
as most people under 25 are fully aware when they attach it admiring, admiringly to a message. So buttocks is your bumma, okay? You're behind, okay? Um, so this is the thing. When we're in work, we're using, uh, you could be sending a work colleague an emoji or a text. And as an older person, you could send something that a younger person would have a completely different idea. So it could be seen as improper. I might send um, I might send an innocent text as an older person to someone in the uh, in the office. Do you want to go get some lunch? Uh, whatever I don't know. And then we put like an aubergine and some some emojis, and it's misunderstood. Okay, down here, as you can see, for a lot of people, it's a, uh, older people, it's a simple peach, and for the younger generations, it's uh, so it's sexual. So now, what does this mean for you guys? Painting of the nails. Well, as far as I'm concerned, painting your nails is painting your nails. <laughs> uh, we call this nail varnish, putting on nail varnish. So I don't know what that means for you guys, but let's have a look. I think the nail varnish means uh, as far, oh, I think I read uh, earlier, it's got, um, for under 25, so that I've got some gossip, I've got some interesting news. And for older people, uh, it's uh, just something we, yeah, I say we, I, I'm in my 40s, so I consider, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there, I'm getting older. So uh, it's something a bit more uh, innocent. Uh, let's go into the pictures. Okay. So again, uh, I was talking to someone about this recently um, because uh, the older generation, millennials, uh, okay, so let's talk about the generations, okay. So the older generations are called baby boomers in English, baby boomers. Uh, after that, you have Generation X. Generation X is my age group, okay, in their 40s, in their 50s, Generation X. Boomers are... Uh, older 60 70 so you got boomer 60 70 uh, generation x my age group 40 50 and then behind me are the uh, millennials they are in their 30s and late 20s and then you have gen z now in the uk you'd say gen z but well technically we say z but you can say Z, it's more common. I think everybody says Gen Z. Sorry, they're, they're hammering down the house here. Uh, so this emoji, again, is death, I think, for older people. And then for younger people, uh, let's have a look. The skull is not a sign of death, but an indication by the user that something was so funny that they nearly died laughing. Okay, so if you want to appear younger in your texts, you guys are probably watching on YouTube, you're younger people probably, and you use this, but for older people, we're still using that kind of out of date, um, crying, laughing, you know, with the tears uh, emoji. Go on to the next one. Okay, today emojis are everywhere in popular culture and there are now 3,000. Let's have a look at this number. You need, guys need to know how to say numbers. Zoom. There are now 3,633. You can say and 33. That's how I would normally say it. 3,633. More commonly now we're hearing 3,633. Officially recognized emojis and approximately 10 billion are sent each day. There is even an annual World Emoji Day. You just missed it. It's on July 17th if you're interested. Okay, two days ago. We missed it. Oh, well. But I'm sure we all used emojis that day anyway. Uh, let me look at the... I don't really use any of these emojis. I'm very... Tra I'm still traditional. I need to start using emojis. Uh, angry, surprised. Um, I don't know what the... I, you know what I started doing actually recently? Is I'll just send a random which like any random means just anyone like I don't I don't choose on purpose just that one random and I'll just stick one in a message and like 
that's it. Just to, I don't know, just to try and become more young. I don't know. It's ridiculous. Moving on. This one. This year that emoji will be confirmed in September. So we're going to get new emojis. Three different colored hearts, a donkey, jellyfish, comb. A comb is this one. A comb, the, the long one that uh, people used more in the old days. Peapod. Interesting. I saw this uh, in on TV last night. That's the green peas, the little vegetable, uh, the little balls in the in the pod. Moose. Moose. I don't know if it's the uh, the animal moose, which is like a deer with big horns, or antlers. Antlers. Uh, maracas. I don't know what maracas are, and a shaking face in the picture. The latter is apparently designed to be used for shock reactions, okay? The latter, which means when you talk about some things, it means the last one. So if I give you a list of something and I say, uh, let's say colors, red, orange, green, blue. The latter is the color of the sea. It means the last one I've just mentioned, the last one I spoke about is the latter. If I mention two things, red and blue, the former means stop at a traffic light. The latter is the color of the sea, red and blue. The former, the first one, the latter, the last one. Quite useful to know. Four of eight. Now, on top of woke, general, gender, gender neutral, lose, lou, ah, okay, here's a, a UK expression, the lou. The lou is what we say for the bathroom. In the, now, when I say we, I'm saying the English speakers in Europe, okay? That will be Scotland. Ireland, Wales, and England. And you could throw maybe um, uh, Australia in there as well. I think their English is more close to the UK English, UK and Ireland. Okay, so we say, if you want to say, oh, I want to go to the bathroom, it's more United States. I want, I need to go to the loo, is a polite way to say in the UK. It's really great tattoos. There's another area of intergenerational co generational conflict which we must wrestle. Step forward emotion. Okay, we saw this. Okay, not impressed, I suppose. Uh, ah, the winking emoji. Okay, I think I read, yeah. The winking emoji this is to wink. When we do this, I'm winking. And if I do this with my eyes, I'm blinking. But this is winking. Okay, it can be innocent, but for the younger generation, Gen Z, let's say, we call the younger generation Gen Z at the moment in their early 20s. Uh, Gen Z, uh, I think it can be a bit more, um, could be again sexual, you know, something is implied. This one fun. Uh, you guys really need to tell me what these mean because I, I use these very innocently. Okay, the aubergine, uh, ah yeah, here's a, a test for you. What's this called in the United States? I have a different name for this in the United States. Anybody guess? Eggplant, eggplant. So we call it aubergine and they call it eggplant. And it's one of those vegetables that I always get brain freeze i'm well, not brain freeze but i just can't remember sometimes i'm like ah oh, it's always what's the name of that what's the name of that vegetable aubergine and the other one uh that in the united states they have a different name is courgette uh courgette and i get courgette mixed up with this fruit uh vegetable as well courgette is the green one that looks like a um cucumber but it's green and long and in the united states i think they call it zucchini it sounds like an italian name zucchini i think yeah so moving on this is the peach one yeah you can see it looks like a bum somebody's behind if you want to say bum you want to say it in english uh in a polite way you could say you're behind behind i heard I hurt my behind. Okay, so that's emojis. Um, I'm definitely interested to know what you guys uh, use in your different countries 
because I'm sure in different countries as well, you, uh, for example, this nail painting or nail varnish uh, emoji could mean something else. The emojis seem to move around a lot. Let me move this mic a bit closer. The emojis seem to move around a lot and uh, yeah, different meanings in different countries. So let's get out of here. And we're gonna go to, I'm gonna go to, I live in Spain at the moment, so we're gonna go to this newspaper, which is a very popular newspaper here in Spain. And it has an English edition. So let's see what's happening. Yes, in, in Europe at the moment, there are a lot of wildfires. Wildfires. And these are the uh, firemen, or they must have a, a, a more gender neutral name now. Because we say everything used to be men before. And now it's in English always trying to make it neutral, gender neutral, gender male and female. So uh, firefighters, firefighters. Before, if you were a child, you would be growing up and say, I want to be a fireman. Or then it would change to fireman, firewoman, and now it's firefighter, which I think is good. Gender neutral is always good. Um, so Southern Europe, yes, pronunciation guys, okay? I'm gonna be focusing on pronunciation as you get better with your English, it's more noticeable when you pronounce things incorrectly, okay? So I'm going to be helping you with your pronunciation and speaking as well. Southern Europe. English doesn't make sense, okay? First thing, at some point you need to understand, English does not make sense. It's crazy. And uh, when you accept that, you're going to be much happier because uh, other languages are more transparent and we have this expression you know they say exactly what they say in the tin uh, it's like you read uh, the instructions and it says boom 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 spanish for example is like this transparent uh, and you look at a word and you can pronounce it the way uh, it's spelt in english it's crazy southern europe battles wildfires amid Apocalypse of heat. Amid means in the middle uh, or during would be a good uh, synonym here. That's true. Uh, very near me the other day, I live in the south of Spain, we had fires and I could see uh, the fires on the hill. It's um, uh, it's a bit scary. It's And I've, I can imagine uh, being near those fires would be incredibly scary. Um, terrible uh, phenomenon but it's something that is quite natural it happens um, I read recently that it, the fires are happening actually happening less but they're more intense because we are uh, in the countries okay we complain and we say that there is we're not prepared for the fires but actually they are less but a bit more out of control when they happen you're free to disagree with me on this. I'm just uh, something I heard. Right, let's, um, we can go in there. Uh, let's look at, so, heading. Southern Europe battles wildfires, blah, blah, blah. Subheading. Let's make it a bit bigger here. Deaths, deaths were reported in Spain and Portugal while France struggled. This is, has problems. When you struggle, it's to, and also if you, if you tie me up, I'm doing this, I'm struggling. It's a struggle. With record temperatures as the heat wave, in Spanish, ola de calor, heat wave, began moving north, putting other countries on alert. Yeah, everywhere in, in Europe at the moment is terribly uh, hot. Something I've gotten used to over time. I don't, I don't mind the heat. I don't mind it at all. Quite like the heat. But uh, it's interesting. I'm from a cold. I'm from a cold country, and we always complain about the weather. And the weather is uh, oh, it's, oh, it's terrible. It's cold. It's raining. You know. And then I realized when I moved to other countries, people are the same. Always complaining about the weather here in Spain. Always complaining. Well, you know, very often once it gets warm, you the people who who don't like the heat 
oh, it's too hot. Yeah, I don't like it. I like the rain. And I don't understand this because when you have lived the rain, you have lived through the rain that I have. I never meet people from the UK or Ireland who really say, I like the rain. It's not common. Because where, where we're from, the rain doesn't fall down. The rain comes at you at an angle in your face with the wind. And it's not, it's not a nice, um, it's not nice. But here in Spain, the rain just falls down. It's very nice. Uh, and you look forward to it. But also because in Spain, you have four seasons, you know, and in most of Europe, you have four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, fall. They call autumn fall in the United States. And um, you have four seasons. So you, you know that when it rains, it's going to go away. But where I'm from, when it rains, it just it rains too often, to be honest. Right. Let's see what we have. Dating apps and male beauty standards. Why are Tinder users so obsessed with height? Let's have a look at this. I just missed Tinder, to be honest. Um, before I met my wife, uh, Tinder was just came out. It was just the early stages. So I never really used Tinder. But I know nowadays it's... And it would have been considered um at the time a bit you know if you ask oh how did you meet well we met on tinder it would have been you know a bit i don't want to say taboo but people would look at you like oh that's uh, now it's just completely common this is how people meet all the time so any way that people can meet is, the more the better dating apps and male beauty standards why are tinder users so obsessed with height your height is how tall you are. Apps, okay. This is applications, and this is how we pronounce apps. Male beauty standards, okay. Subheading, biometric studies suggest that women consider tall men more attractive. What is myth and what is reality? Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I, this is, uh, seems to be true anyway. Women do, as far as I, I mean, I'm generalizing, okay? But um, there is an expression in English when women talk about men or it's a very common expression to say, yeah, I'm looking for someone tall, dark and handsome. Tall, just, you know, as, yeah, tall, dark and handsome. Just, um, dark, dark haired. Not like me, I've red hair. In uh, the UK, they would say ginger, or in other countries, say ginger. I say red. Um, in the United States, they say red hair. Um, blonde. I think blonde is actually the only word in English that is masculine or feminine when we write. Because blonde, when you, if you write, I'm a blonde male, a blonde man, you write B L O N D. And if you're a female, you'll write, I'm blonde, B-L-O-N-D-E. I could be wrong, but that's what I heard. And it's kind of a cool little thing that English has one word, at least, that is masculine or feminine. But uh, I'm not even sure if, if people know this. Um, let's go and have a look at this. Zoom out a bit. That's very controversial nowadays because we're all supposed to be inclusive and you should uh, not have any standards. But the reality is people like what they like and often we like what, you know, that's the way it is. So um, in the promotional interviews for the film Spider-Man, No Way Home, which premiered, the two protagonists and real life couple Okay, I'm going to get in trouble here. I have no idea how to... Forgive me for this pronunciation. Zendaya and Tom Holland got used to a repeated question. Did they have issues with their height difference? And I assume that is because she must be taller than him. Because the other way around, there wouldn't be a problem. How, for example, did they kiss? The height disparity isn't enormous. The actors differ in height only by six centimeters. But Zendaya is taller than Tom. Okay in a culture where that is not normal. Yeah, men, um, in, my, in my relationship as well, I'm uh, quite a bit taller than my wife. 
uh, men seem to be more, I don't know, maybe it's a protective thing or we feel more manly when we're taller. Uh, women maybe um, feel more protected. This could be, yeah, I don't know, nowadays it's, uh, maybe in the old days it was genetics. But nowadays, um, I think if you have a big wallet, if you have a lot of money, it, it can solve a lot of problems for whoever you are. Um, both game you followed interviews probably Holland said jokes about being a short man measures 173 huh here's something interesting okay because here they've written one meter 73 centimeters if you're in the UK and somebody says how tall are you they are not going to say I'm one meter 80 I'm one meter 73 they're going to say we use foot or feet. So one meter 73 would be about five feet. Five foot five, five feet, five inches. Oh no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to look at that. Let me have a quick look. feet two meters let's have a look here right 5.5 okay he is five foot exactly five foot seven i'm six feet or six foot and that should be 183 i think So it's, it's interesting because it's very one of the things in the English language uh, or you, if you go to the United States or the UK or Australia, the, the kind of standard that all men want to be is six foot. If you're six foot, it's like, OK, I'm safe. OK, I feel like I'm a tall person. Uh, it's, it's a standard. Um, but I don't imagine in other countries where you use meters that you say, Oh, yeah, it needs to be 180, 183. Mm. That's that's the the goal, you know. So it's a, it's kind of a better to use meters uh, because there's not so much um, paranoia. Okay. So I'm going to be commenting a lot on differences between different countries. I find it very interesting uh, differences in countries. Uh, I, I really love talking about it. Um, I have opinions about it, but I'm not married to my opinions. I can change, and I'm interested to know what your opinions are on different things as well. Let's go to the Guardian. Let's look at a bit of sport, see what's happening in the world. I noticed the European, uh, the Women's European Cup is on at the moment, so let's go to football. I haven't been following. I, well, um, it's pretty happy. I'm happy with that. Right, football, Spain's Laia Alexandri. That's it, doesn't sound like a very typical Spanish name. Uh, Spain, okay, let's uh, have a look here. Okay, we'll go in and have a look. Sid Lowe, he's a, he's a, he's a good reporter, he's a good uh, journalist. He... Um, also has a podcast about uh, Spanish football. Spain's are now, we're seeing how best to hurt England. Okay, I think Spain will be facing England later. Midfielder who likes to paint may ah midfielder who likes to paint made her age group debut. Okay, we say debut. We say it like the French way against England and is ready to step up. To the Euro 2022 quarter final. Step up, okay. Mm. The Spain midfielder stands on the grass, bo boats floating gently by on the ten on the ten, okay. St. George's cross fluttering from the roof. Okay. Here what we have is like it's a bit poetic. Um 
The Thames is, and the pronunciation is Thames. There's a, there's a TH, but the pronunciation is just T, and it's the river that runs through, through London. Thames, St. George's Cross fluttering from the roof. St. George's Cross is, appears on many, many flags in Europe. Uh, you see it, pff, uh, it's very popular. I think it's popular in Portugal. I think it's popular, the, the country Georgia, obviously. Um, it's the Red Cross. The English flag for England is in fact a white flag with the red St. George's Cross. Most people, when they see English advertised as a language, they think perhaps the United Kingdom flag is mm. England, which is the red, the white and the blue. But the English flag is in fact white flag, red, and here it says St. George's Cross fluttering. Generally, flutter is what a flag does when the wind is blowing. This is a flag doing this, it's fluttering. So it's St. George's Cross fluttering from the roof of the 13th century manor house across the lawn. Lawn is your, the grass in, uh, in front of a building. And that's uh, the lawn mower is what we use to cut the grass. And smiles. Uh, okay, let's have a look. Okay, so Spain uh, doing well. I want to uh, hear some more results. Belgium, Seals Historic Euro, last eight. Okay, the last eight is the, what is it, semi finals? No, it's the quarter finals. So the last eight, Belgium are into the quarter finals. Mallard sends Iceland out as by okay. France must be. Okay, I need to keep my eye on this a bit more. Spurs, Tottenham Hotspur, English League. This is an interesting story because Ronaldo plays for Manchester United, Man United. Eric Ten Hag is the manager. I want to play in a certain way and Ronaldo can contribute to that. This is a problem. Ronaldo is a superstar. He is a superstar footballer, uh, but the problem is, is he's getting older and he's playing for a team that are absolutely terrible at the moment. Manchester United are awful and Ronaldo just doesn't want to listen to managers. So it's very difficult for this man here because I think frankly, frankly means uh, honestly, he would prefer Ronaldo to be gone so he can focus on younger players and help develop something but when Ronaldo is in the team it's all about Ronaldo and um, I definitely you know, Ronaldo is a fantastic player but uh, he's he's getting older now and uh, I th apparently he's very difficult to work with because he's he's Ronaldo you know he's he wants to be the leader um, so there were rumors or thing, uh, gossip rumors. People were saying that he was going to go to um, Chelsea. Uh, but the problem for a lot of clubs is, uh, yeah, it's his character. He's very uh, egotistical. Um, it's all about him. And um, uh, that's a problem for a lot of, and also his wages. Now, let me talk about wages. Wages, uh, wages are what you get paid every month. Your wages. Your salary, now th this is open to interpretation. If you're working for a job and you, your salary, as far as I'm concerned, your salary is what you get paid in total per year. So if you talk about getting a job, our Ronaldo talks about getting a job and they say every year we're going to pay you this much that's his salary and every month he gets part of that salary they're, they're his wages so um, that's it that's an, an easy simplified version when you talk about your your wages and your salary okay uh, let's go back here that's the football uh, interested to find out what uh, teams you guys support. I support Liverpool. We unfortunately lost again to Real Madrid. Uh, so annoying. Uh, Real Madrid just 
no matter how bad they are, they just don't know how to lose in finals. We should have won there, really, but um, Real Madrid, congratulations to them. Uh, they just they just win in finals. That's the way they are. Um, Arsenal, what are they? Zinchenko due for medical after agreeing four-year deal. Okay, let me give you a little pronunciation uh, fact here. Jew, D-U-E. D-U in UK English will be pronounced like a J, like my name is James. And a D-U will be pronounced like J. Zinchenko, Jew for medical. If you go to the United States, it changes. It depends. They might say Dew. Zinchenko, Dew, pronouncing more uh, the D-U. D -d. Um, but, yeah, I think mm, all of the time, there's always exceptions. But 90% of the time, 99% of the time, in the UK and Ireland, we pronounce D-U, J, during the week. I'm not going to say during during the week during the week and i think in the united states they mix it i'm due to have a medical during the week so they mix a bit more so a bit more uh you choose what you want to say whatever suits you best you are your own person it's important to be flexible in english and like i say i'm not married to my ideas i'm not married to my opinions and i'm very flexible with english spelling as well um, I'll inform you of United States spelling, UK spelling. Um, it is just an interpretation of how we speak. It's and I remember I, we're, in the English world, there's no central academy or group of people who decide this is how the language is supposed to be. Uh, I know here in Spain they have the RAI, it's like an academy for Spanish, and they lay out the rules, and this is accepted, this is not accepted. Um, in English, we don't have that, because if um, any group decides they want to do this, uh, the other countries won't listen to them. So if the United States set up something, the UK will say, well, we made the language, we're not listening to you. And if the UK make it, the United States will say, well, we're not listening to you. So um, English is very fluid, it's very flexible, and, and it's good to, yeah, it's good that way. Why not? So you can be flexible with the language, you can choose if you want uh, a bit more American pronunciation, a bit more English. My pronunciation is, uh, it, it's interesting because I'm from Ireland, but I would say more things similar perhaps to UK English, but we're heavily influenced by the United States as well. And another thing that's quite interesting would be something that's called rhotic and non-rhotic. In the UK, not, not everywhere in the UK, but the, let's say England, okay, like these... Uh, footballers here okay all of these footballers when they speak they will they are non-rhotic which means they don't pronounce the r in a lot of words it's the style of the language not pronouncing the r uh, whereas the in the united states and where i'm from we will pronounce the r so let's give you an example um, these two girls are blonde b-l-o-n-d-e they have blonde hair but if I were English, I would say they have blonde hair. I'm not pronouncing the R. Oh, look there, they have blonde hair. So I'm just not pronouncing the R and automatically you can, it's almost like the accent just comes naturally. So if you uh, are aiming to have an English accent, that's one place you can start. Ah, wink. Um, uh, just cut out the R, car, hair, there, where, um, it sounds quite nice. I like the English accent. It's not, it just doesn't come, obviously, I have my own accent. It, but the pronunciation um, uh, is when you're learning, don't worry about your, your accent because if you're from Argentina or if you're from Korea, wherever you're from, 
first things first, focus on your pronunciation. Your accent will uh, be distinct, but if you focus on your pronunciation, uh, it, it won't be, it's not going to be a problem. You are, and we're all from different countries and your, your accent is, is nice. Don't worry about that. It's the pronunciation. If you have a, if you work on your pronunciation, everything's, everything's fine. It's when you have a strong accent and bad pronunciation that things get uh, complicated. So that is the sport. Um, there is the uh, European Cup at the moment. We will see how that goes. It's definitely becoming more popular now. The football is becoming more popular now. Women's football, uh, never popular um, when I was younger. They are pushing it more and more. Uh, before, I thought, this is a bit ridiculous. Look, we're not interested in women's football. It's not... It's not good, blah, blah, blah. But to be honest, I think, and this this newspaper, uh, The Guardian, it's a liberal left-wing newspaper, I have been very good. They, they when they talk about football, they, they just say, Spain beat Portugal in football. They're not going to mention if it's men's or women's. So uh, more and more, uh, we're getting interested in women's football and... Um, it's a good thing. Uh, I'm actually, like I said before, I wasn't interested uh, and I could come up with good arguments to say why I'm not interested in women's football. The quality is not as good. Um, uh, the, the, and it's proven there's nobody interested. But, but now, in a, in a few short years, the quality is improving. Uh, fantastic games, crowds, uh, full crowds at stadiums. So excellent stuff. The men's World Cup will be a uh, World Cup uh, in football. And it's football, okay? Okay, United States. Football in the United States is this throwing the ball with their hand. Football over here in Europe is, and the rest of the world, thank you very much, is what you see on this screen, okay? But again, if I went to the United States, I would quickly change and just say soccer. I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to try and fight my corner on that one because they wouldn't listen to me and uh, need to be flexible. Right, let's get out of here. Going back, more sports. We had um, uh, in the tennis, we had Wimbledon recently, which is the um, tennis played on grass. And one thing about Wimbledon is you need to dress in white. When you play in the Wimbledon tournament, you must dress in white. So here we have Daria. Okay, any foreign names? Names from abroad. I'm going to have trouble with, but I'll do my best. Daria Kasatkina. I don't know if it's Kasatkina, Kasatkina. Yeah, that sounds better. Daria Kasatkina comes out as gay and speaks out against Russian attitudes. So to come out, phrasal verb. To come out means to, uh, it, it's an expression people use to when you tell the world or uh, your parents or people you know that you are gay. It's uh, often people say, oh, when did you come out? And that means, and the long expression is to come out of the closet. The closet is the, your wardrobe where you keep clothes. And to come out of the closet was the expression before uh, to mean that you uh, have, you were hidden, you were hiding your sexuality. And now you are come out of the closet and you let everybody, you know, uh, you let people know that you are gay. That is to come out. As far as I know, they are very homophobic. I've heard Russia is very homophobic. I'll be interested to know for anybody uh, in the future or uh, on the stream uh, it, with first-hand experience who is Russian. Are you guys homophobic? Why are you homophobic? What are the attitudes in Russia to homosexuality? Let me know. Russia's number one female tennis player is in a relationship with woman. Kasatkina, living in peace with yourself is all that matters. 
That's true. Money helps. <laughs> Money helps. Then I'll be living in peace with myself. Uh, let's read a couple of paragraphs here. Daria Kats, uh, Kasatkina, Russia's highest ranked female tennis player, has come out as gay in a video interview posted online on Monday. So when you put something online, you post it online. Could be something to post on Twitter, to post a video. What you do when you put something up online is you post it. The current, which means now, the current number 12 Russian blogger uh, Vitya Kravchenko. Uh, ah, the current number 12 told Russian blogger Vitya Kravchenko that she is in a relationship with a woman and found living in the closet. You see what I said? Uh, impossible. Kasakina, who is not currently based in Russia, also, yeah, not a good idea. Uh, also posted pictures on Instagram with her girlfriend. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so what you say when I sneeze in English, you when people sneeze in English, you should say, bless you. And then the response is, thanks. Uh, even, even if it's religious, what can you do? We don't actually have uh, anything that I know. You can let me know. Uh, what do you say in your country when someone sneezes? Here in Spain, you can say Jesus, which is Jesus in English, or you can say Salud, which is health. Uh, it's uh, an option. Uh, what, what about in your country? Pictures on Instagram with her girlfriend, the figure skater, Natalia Zibianco. Okay, cool. Right, let's go down here. Uh, la, let's have a look. The 25-year-old also spoke out against... When you speak out against some attitudes, it's, you're fighting against those. You're, to, to speak out against something is to go against something towards homosexuality and restrictions on LGBTQ+. This is the new way to say it. LGBTQ+. Rights in Russia. So many subjects are taboo. When something is taboo, it's uh, something that you should not talk about. Maybe talking about sex in some countries is taboo. You don't talk about it. It's, it's a taboo topic. Uh, in Russia, this notion of someone wanting to be gay or becoming gay is ridiculous. I think there is nothing easier in the world than being straight. That's true when you're straight. Um, I think it's like being a man. Uh, my experience as a man is just, it's easy. And being straight is easy. Straight is when you are heterosexual. When uh, men like women or women like men, we say straight. And gay if you are homosexual. So, um, yeah, uh, I agree. I agree. And I think definitely being gay, when I was younger, uh, growing up, uh, being gay was definitely taboo. And um, sometimes people were, even on English uh, TV programs, they, they would put gay people on, but they would never specifically say they were gay. They would just act in a very, this, what we call camp camp is they have this very feminine type of attitude and they're kind of comical people funny people uh that's called camp uh, and the, there was an obsession with these people on in british television but society was very uh against gay people when i was growing up and now um complete opposite complete opposite everything is uh well, there's still problems in the world, but I would say uh, it's a very open attitude to homosexuality in the UK now, and in, as far as I know, in the United States. But still, uh, homosexuals still uh, have to fight for their rights. Uh, and that's an interesting thing as well. We were talking about sports. When the World Cup is going to happen in Qatar, it's quite known that Qatar is... A lot of taboo things in that country in Qatar and um, uh, they would be against homosexuality and that's um, a debating topic at the moment it's a hot topic 
the World Cup is in Qatar. Why are they letting the World Cup ha happen in a country that is um, maybe misogynistic against women, uh, homophobic against uh, homosexuals? Um, but of course, we all know it's because of money. It's quite obvious. Uh, money is king. And that's that's the way it is. So um, I'm going to just go back. We'll look at one final thing before we sign off. Uh, that's a sport. I'll go back. Oh, I wanted to go into El Pais. Yes. Find out. Let's uh, randomly close my eyes and pick something here. Now let's go to science and tech. Just did sports. Psychedelic therapy, fighting depression with hallucinogenic mushrooms. Okay. Magic fungi, fungi are mushrooms, are used for therapy around the world, but in Colombia their legality remains unclear and their medicinal use unregulated. Last month, El Pais attended a group healing session on the outskirts of Medellin. Outskirts is the outside of a city. The um, you have the center part, the suburbs, and then outside the suburbs are where they're more like um, residential people living. Um, not so many. Uh, yeah, the the center, and then after the center is the suburbs, and then on the edge, on the outside, is the outskirts. Uh, of Medellin, 12 clients, 5 guides, and 3 grams of the flesh of God per person. Okay, grams is how we weigh something. When you go, um, a gram would be, um, so a kilogram. Gram is, uh, there, there are 1,000 grams in a kilogram. The flesh of God per person. And the flesh of God, I assume, is the name of this... Um, uh, Mushroom, does my body need sex? If what you, if what we understand by sexual relations involves another person, it is not actually necessary. Although it does bring a sense of physical and mental well-being. Okay, well-being is feeling well. Ah, yes, mosquitoes. Um, I lived in a house recently and the mosquitoes were awful awful tiger mosquitoes um those guys were intense intense why do some mosquitoes bite more uh, bite some people more than others although no one is certain about what scents smells attract mosquitoes the most several studies point to a group of molecules why Ah, okay. Group of disease-carrying mosquitoes have killed more people than all the wars in recorded history combined. Oh my god. We need to get rid of mosquitoes. They are a, just a complete pest. A pest. We don't need them. Uh, I'm pretty sure if the world had no mosquitoes, it would be a much better place. So, in all the wars in history, World War One, Two all the wars mosquitoes have killed more people in fact statistics indicate that the mosquito is by far the world's deadliest creature for humans mosquitoes caused okay what do you guys think this number is so many people have a problem with numbers and it's very important. Mosquitoes caused around 725,000 deaths in 2018 alone. The second leading cause of death for humans that year was other people. Guns don't kill people. People do. I'm not reading that. It's just an expression. Um, people were responsible for... Do you guys want to try in your head? 4,000. No, I'm already wrong. 
437,000 deaths. So when you see a number like this, just say this part as if it were the 100, and then just say these three zeros as 1,000. 437,000 deaths. Trailing far behind were the combined deaths caused by snakes, dogs, poisonous snails, crocodiles. Ah, I never knew how to say the plural of this. Hippopotamuses. I really couldn't have told you what the plural of a hippopotamus was. I probably would have said hippopotami. But it's hippopotamuses. Elephants, lions, wolves and sharks. Um, yeah. So mosquitoes... Look at the number difference. Um, they need to. They need to find. Um, what's the um, a vaccine? They need to find a vaccine for uh, mosquitoes, uh, crocodiles, poisonous snails. It's something I always think of. Is um, I remember listening to a podcast. Oh, I just seen poisonous snail. Somebody said, was like. What would you, what would you, ra would you, you could have, win the lottery, but if you win the lottery, there is a poisonous snail that is always going your direction. And if it gets you, it will kill you. But it moves at the speed of a snail. So it's moving super slow. So all you need to do is just move to the other side of the world. You can do that. You, you've won the lottery. You've got lots of money. But it's always on your mind that there is a snail, and let's assume it can go over the water. It's always coming for you. So you, you're rich, but you have this in your mind of this snail always coming for you. And then after so many years, I don't know, maybe what, 12 years, 20 years, you have to move. So people go, oh, why are you moving? Why are you, what, what? you have such a good life? Yeah, yeah, just, you know, a job offer. That's really the snail. <laughs> anyway, it just stuck with it stuck in my head. I don't know. It was on a podcast. These guys, a football podcast, and they were talking about this. So um, yes, mosquitoes really do like you better. And here's why. Oh yeah, this is what we need. We need to know. Uh, why do they like some people more? Okay, let's get down and find out. What what can we get from? Um, what do they transmit? Diseases, West Nile fever, Zika, Dengue, Yellow fever, um, Chikungunya, St. Louis encephalitis, encephalitis, lymphatic fever, okay, lots of different diseases. I'm, I can't even pronounce half of these. Rift, Rift Valley fever, Semliki forest virus infection. Lots and lots and lots. Further, uh, it's causing, okay. It's understandable why people want to know what makes mosquitoes choose to bite one person and not another. It's true. When you go on holidays, or you you know, um, in my family, for some reason the the mosquitoes just seem to they particularly like my son, um, and then you'll go somewhere else and they'll you know they just seem to like one person more. Carbon dioxide and body odor. Male and female mosquitoes can both survive without biting other animals, but females need blood to complete the reproductive cycle. Ah, okay, so they don't need to bite, but if the females um, are having larvae or the babies, larvae. Mm, carbon dioxide, CO2, was identified as a mosquito attractant almost a century ago. This gas has also been used to trap female mosquitoes seeking, looking, seeking means looking, to consume blood with the nutrients needed for ovogenesis or egg generation. Uh, da, da, da. Looking down. So what's the explanation? There are other physical and chemical cues that attract mosquitoes such as heat, water vapor, humidity, Visual cues and most importantly, body or ah, body odor. Interesting. Although the most attractive smells or scents for mosquitoes are not well known, 
Mm -hmm. Several studies. Come on, we want to know. Uh, are there, uh, okay, so odor. Acetophenone. Acetophenone. So that's what attracts mosquitoes. And that is probably in our body odor. Okay. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter. At a certain time of the evening, when the mosquitoes decide that they need blood, I don't think, I don't think they're too choosy. Choosy is when you're. Mm, I don't want that one. I want that one. It must have this. Uh, it, you know, you can be very choosy about your food. You can be very choosy about what you like, uh, about clothes, for example. A choosy person or a picky person. So uh, I think mosquitoes are not very choosy at a, when you're sitting outside, for example. Uh, in, normally they come at dusk. Dusk is when uh, the sun goes down and it's still bright. Uh, it's just before nighttime dusk uh, as it just before the, the 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 dark comes and the kind of that would be the nighttime one dusk and then the morning one before the sun comes is dawn and there's a film i think called from dusk till dawn so there you go right then so that's it i hope uh i hope to to do more of these for you guys um i definitely want you guys to subscribe uh let your friends know i'm going to be doing this on a regular basis and uh as i get better i'm going to be interacting with you guys more and um we uh will then uh, be able to improve your english uh but as i said thanks for watching and um uh, do tune in next time uh, to Dream Better English and also I want to give a shout out to our sponsor LK Formation uh, offering tailor-made solutions for your business um, and we'll catch you in the next episode tomorrow be there or be square